All right, so this is a video on the condition report for the FSA pathway one and two. You've got me, Steve Millis, and Tony Holes here. And we'll just have a quick discussion on the condition report. And I guess one thing to point out, Tony, is this is getting built by the information you put on that very first page. It'll pre-fill these parts here with the performance requirements and the measures that you're doing. But your job is then to complete this by filling out a few things up the top and signing, which is very important, and dating at the bottom. But I guess just, just to clarify with everyone, what what's what's the purpose of the condition report, Tony? Why do we why have we got to do this? Um, well, historically, the, the system condition report informed the building owner as to whether they could sign the AFSS, um, and that was prior to the new legislation where we had our third party or, or you guys signing these things off. And it was when I, in my day, it was called we used to call it a, a annual fire safety statement, and then my, my customers used to ask me for an annual fire safety statement, and and we'd give them this, um, and essentially. Um, it's a really important part and an underused part of the system, um, and it should be used um, by the um, service provider doing the test and inspect, and provided to the annual fire uh, to the fire safety assessor. The fire safety assessor, in my opinion, shouldn't be filling this document out. Mm. They should be getting that document and using it and keeping it in evidence that the systems are being tested and inspected in accordance with the requirements of the performance. And that's why the statement's there. It's still got the statement in the middle of it, which is very similar to the statement that's on the Sorry. annual fire safety statement. That's why it was there. Yeah. Uh, the system's capable of performing. Um, and so do I have to crawl through all the service records? Like where we're doing that um, during the assessment of uh um, of this whole thing, we're expecting that we're getting service records and evidence that the system's performing based on operation and function. But performance is bigger than that. And this is where uh, do I have any outstanding defects? Um, and another part of this report that's it's not covered very well is the, um, the section uh, relating to... Um, it's called the, um, just scroll it up a little bit there, Steve. My brain's not working yet. No, Dan. Yeah. Oh, the summary. summary. Yeah, yeah, the summary of the relevant service records. So um, AS1851 requires us to report um, out of tolerance servicing. And the purpose of that is because um, if a, a, a measure is supposed to be uh, tested once every month and it's, it's tested out of tolerance, uh, oftentimes you cannot have that measure serviced as regularly as it should be now. You're not a, not a means for failing the um, the measure, but um, getting an idea of um, how the system is being maintained is really important, mm. and that's why that's there. Yeah. So, I mean, part as part of this, this unit of competence that you're doing here, you guys have got to fill this out. Uh, but moving forward, I, I guess, especially as when 1851 becomes mandated, that, you know, you really want to be demanding this off any of your contractors mm -hmm. and using this as evidence to, to inform your decision mm -hmm. around whether to endorse that measure or not. And the example that I'm thinking of is, of is if you're signing off on a whole building, and you're using multiple contractors, then you really want to be getting uh, this document off of each contract, or sorry, each contractor to help inform your decision. And it's just designed to clearly outline any defects. Now, these are um, these are outstanding defects. Is that right, Tony? They're, yeah, that's it's like a, And you know how I, I like to think about this document as a, it's like a pink slip for your car. You know, it's like a road worthy almost, but it's like a building worthy. And, you know, you can't get your rego without your car passing the pink slip. And this is kind of a good way to think about this one. 
you know, you're looking for your contractors to issue a pink slip on that that measure, you still got to go and take a look and verify other things, but it just helps to inform your decision. 100%. And the thing is, is that defects can get lost in the system. So you can have um, a bunch of defects on a, um, on a, a record or a service record, summary record or whatever that you provide. Um, oftentimes companies provide defect reports in the form of a quote or an invoice or something like that. And look, it can just go um, un unfixed mm. and and get missed. And um, we need evidence that defects are fixed. So one of the one of the things that I do when I'm assessing this, and about you, Steve, is uh, the reporting that I get provided for that given measure. Um, I look through it and I look for defects. Yeah, I look for the quality of the report. I look for validation of the report. Um, for, for on a number of ways, but I'm looking for defects, and I'm I'm expecting to find some evidence that that defect has been repaired. So you might look at a report that's done in February and have another one that's done in March or April, and just see whether that particular asset actually passes that time. But oftentimes you don't get a lot of information about it, what's happened because you don't see the back end of the company and what's what's happened there. And this is a perfect way to say, look, there's no outstanding defects. All of them have been fixed. Um, and in your summary, you can you can explain that the, the customer is not giving you permission to fix the defects. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a, a classic example back in 2014 where I had defected. Um, every month I was turning up to a pump set and defecting it because the charges the, that wouldn't start the diesel pump set, the batteries were not the charger on the batteries wasn't working. Yeah, I provided a quote at that point. Um, followed it up, you know, reasonably regularly, uh, but it got to the end of the year, and my customer said, "Oh, I need my annual fire safety statement so I can sign my annual fire safety statement." So I gave him the statement. And uh, mine was a little bit different because it was created through the database and it, and it actually gave the outstanding defects and it was a fairly detailed report. Uh, and uh, the, the owner come back to me and said, well, I can't sign this. The, you know, the pump's not working. I said, yeah, I've been telling you that for about six months. Yeah. And yeah, so it's just very it easy. Clearly outlines to them what's going on. Yeah. 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 And so... Um, the, that's what the summary is all about. It's about sort of telling a bit of a story about how the service went and, and whether um, all the services were conducted in the right time frames. And it doesn't matter if they weren't. And, and AS1851 says that we should be reporting to our customer when we're out of tolerance. Who, who does that? Yeah. And who makes themselves look bad like that? But it's actually, if you're selling compliance to your customer and this is all about compliance, then you should be doing that. Yeah, and um, and look, if you are doing that, it actually it actually validates the whole process when yeah. you're telling your customer, look, sorry, you know, oftentimes you need that half a person or that one person, and you know, you picked up a big contract or whatever. But yeah, mm. anyway, so that's where that's for. Ideally, you know, if all the defects have been rectified, there's nothing outstanding. This, you know, don't leave this blank. That's why I just put that nil to report there. But if there's outstanding defects that haven't been rectified, this is this is where you would, including non-conformances, this is where you would indicate uh, what they are. And is this a place to indicate what they're going to do about them as well? Um, not really. Um, it's it's just basically to report that this is the condition of the system at this point in time. Yeah. So, um, in exa for example, that the defect with the the pump set, it would be, you know, fire hydrant systems, uh, pump set, critical critical defect. Yeah, pump, pump set's set. unable to operate. It's a critical defect. Yeah. Um, doesn't operate. And um, you might say refer to quote number or whatever. You know, it's not, you can do what you like there, but it's just a very simple thing to say this is the state of or the condition of the system at this point. Yeah. Now, scrolling back up here, you can just apply a report number of your choice. Uh, the period covered, make sure that it's the 12 months leading up to your inspection. So don't forward date it. I see that quite commonly people, uh, you know, saying it's from 
ninth month 2024 to ninth month 2025 in the future but you're actually reporting on what's happened in that 12 month period between uh inspections yeah and then you've got well, the name lining up sorry yeah. but preferably lining your inspections up so that your yearly inspection is done somewhere within that three month period um so i'm expecting that period covered to be within that three month period prior to the statement so it can, doesn't have to be exactly onto the statement date, but it does need to have um, to to you know pro provide an annual um, service within that three month period of the statement being signed. Okay. And then the final thing: make sure you you complete all these details here. Put your name, address of the company, and your signature and date, and that really will. Um, validate that condition report yeah i'm getting harsher on signatures on on uh, when we're doing yeah those particular measures steve because um um as one requires a signature on a report on a summary report or, or on a um a log and um you know we have to assess to that standard that's what the units of competency are telling us to do um and people just aren't signing reports uh, so yeah. the, the technician is supposed to be signing their reports. Yeah. So make sure you sign it and happy days.